Good evening, Jan. Good evening, Bruce. All right, it's uh, the 21st of December, and it's uh, it's not Friday yet. We're doing a Friday call here for, for publication on Friday, but uh, uh, because uh, t today is also the, um, well, tonight is the night of the uh, solstice, I thought it would be a good idea to talk today as well, because I wanted to talk about the uh, Yule. And uh, for uh, those who have read the Uralinda or know anything about it, the idea of the Yol, which is uh, which means wheel, is a is is an extremely important concept uh, among the Freyas. And of course, uh, Christmas is also called the Yule celebration. So I thought that this would be the per perfect time to talk about this subject. And you suggested we read a few fragments and... Um... Yeah, my, what I want to get down to, so it, uh, the, the, the Ura Linda talks about the Yol, but, and it talks about celebrating the Yol, mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't tell, exa tell us exactly when that is. And uh, I, I just want to use some uh, cultural references and what we know about uh, the Yuletide yeah. uh, to try to figure out, to, to see if we can figure out uh, what, the, what the differences and similarities are between uh, how it was celebrated then and how we celebrate it now. Would you mind reading the section right below the, the pictures that we have of the Yule there? What here Boba said, sent the tekena from that Yule. Dat is dat forma sinnebeeld Uralda's. Aak van het aanvang jefte begin, waar u tijd kwam. Dat is de krode der eeuw met dat jul moet omgelapen. Ja, so uh, uh, I, I picked this quote because it really kind of encapsulates the belief of the, the, the Freyas. Uh, uh, I'll read it out in English. Mm -hmm. Depicted above are the signs of the Yule. Uh, which is the primary symbol of Vralda and of the potential or the beginning from which came time, the bearer, who must conduct the Yule and its circuit forever. So that really that, that puts all of it together kind of <laughs> to, to, to me that encapsulates this the spiritual or at least the, 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 the belief about where we came from. It also gives me a basis for understanding kind of what the, what is the spiritual meaning behind the Yule festival, or let's just say even Christmas, right? I mean, it's uh, the, the, the modern word is Christmas. It, it, it be, it's the same celebration uh, um, in, in many respects. The Yule, the wheel, the six-spoked wheel is the first symbol of Vralda and of the potential of the beginning or of creation uh, of time and the bearer who conducts the Yule in its circuit forever. And uh, we can talk about the bearer and how the wheel plays a role with the wheelbarrow and all of these things. But uh, I think that would be a little bit too deep for a, for a short discussion mm -hmm. about Yule today. Yeah. Do you agree with me that 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 Christmas and 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 the Yule celebration are one and the same? Uh, there have been some shifts, like some parts, some elements of the original Yule fe feast may have uh, been transfer to uh, Dutch uh, Santa Claus, which is uh, a bit like Santa Claus, mm -hmm. but it's earlier in December. Yeah. And one interesting detail is that they um, that we still have uh, uh, edible letters from chocolate and from uh, banquet, from cookie, um, from pastry. Right. It is in a uh, painting from the early 17th century, and there are more paintings like this. With um, but with these letters, yeah, uh, and, and you guys still give each other letters to this day on Sinterklaas. Yeah, huh? yeah, it's a deeply rooted tradition. So why don't we read that section that you, then you, that you, you were just talking about then about celebrating the Yule every year? The text uh, explains how the the regular standschrift was uh, designed by Freya, and then Festa made another version of it for the longhand. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a sea king, God Freya, he made uh, the counting numbers. And then there's a sentence: "Tis derum benauwd to druk dat we er jaarlijks een feest oor vier jaar. Wie mogen we al dat eeuwig dank toe via 
dat hij zijn gaast zou herden in oor uit zijn eetla het varen leta. Het is daarvoor niet een fitting dat we should celebrate the Yule every year. That's kind of a, I, I realized when I reread that in, in Freya's, that's a, it's, it's quite a tough section to translate, actually. And uh, the, we should celebrate the Yule every year. So it was because it was used to make the letters and, and the numbers, that's why they celebrate it. And you all still celebrate by giving each other letters every year. So that's, that's, that's quite an interesting parallel or... or Yes, and there is the aspect of uh, that the wheel is also the wheel of time. It's also explained in various fragments. That brings me to, so I, I went on the internet and I just uh, uh, kind of searched for the meaning of Yule, right? So the meaning of the Yule Fest, festival. And there's so many different opinions about it. Um, uh, for, for example, I got on this, uh, uh, there was a website, it's uh, in, the encyclopedia.com or something like that. It says, many researchers believe that in the early Middle Ages, people in, the nor in Northern Europe celebrated a midwinter festival called Yule. So they many believe that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, although the history of the word remains uncertain, some authorities believe it comes from the Anglo-Saxon word yol, meaning fest, feast, uh, while others believe that it comes from a different yol, meaning wheel. Um, at least one scholar suggests, um, yeah, that it was on Martin Maas. Uh, so there's, among scholars, academics, there seems to, to be... Uh, a uh, some some controversy about what what the the meaning of 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 Yule is, and of course they ignore the Uralinda, uh, <laughs> which which explains it quite quite easily. Um, but there uh, there are uh, writings from uh, this uh, Benedictine monk known as the Venerable Bede who um, who explained that uh, both December and January in Old England were were called uh, Yuli. Uh, did you did you realize that that uh, and I think in Old Norse there's sources also that that say that what we call December and January were both called uh, the months were both called Yuli. So so Bede noted that the English people of his day, the Angles, Use the word Yuli, an ancestor of the word Yule. The, the interesting thing that that he also noted is that the the what we call Christmas Eve was called by the heathens uh, Modranecht. Yeah, Mother's Night. Mother's Night, and well, that would make also a lot of sense because uh, in that section you read where they're talking about uh, celebrating the Yule. Um, they also it mentions that Freya used it to make the Stanskrift, and then uh, uh, Festa, the the first mother, um, the first honor honorary mother, uh, used it to make the Runskrift. Mm -hmm. So we've now we've got a tradition whereby you you give letters, and now and and then uh, uh, here's a record of a tradition whereby we honor the mothers. So, so it seems to point again to me to the same festival. But the interesting thing about it is that Juli, of course, is in German and uh, uh, and Dutch, uh, the name for a month in the middle of summer. And Julius Caesar may have had his name or his name, that name may have been derived from the Yule as well, Julius. Well, so indirectly, uh, the month July being named after Julius Caesar and if Julius, if the name Julius is based on uh, the word Yule, via another way, via another road, it comes back to the Yule again. Uh, uh, one interesting thing that I realized when I was doing the research for the Uralinda for this is that we, other than the pictures of the of the Yule in the chapter that we started with, there are no actual descriptions of the Yule as a six-spoked wheel. It's 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 quite interesting because it's the it's the primary symbol of Valda, yeah. but they don't talk about it very much. It seems to be a given that everyone knows what the Yule is in the in the book. There's the the pictures that we saw at the beginning with the six spoked, and then the only other reference that that uh, shows the shape is in section 13H, where they talk about Apollonius Burch. Yeah. 
and it says uh, when you're standing on, so the tower has six sides and it's three times 30 feet high, flat on top. Uh, and uh, looking down from the tower, one sees the shape of the Yule. Yeah. Uh, so as knowing the tower has six sides, it must have six spokes. Uh -huh. um, and uh, those are the only two references in the entire book that tell us that the six-spoked wheel is uh, Yule. Yeah. Interesting indeed, yeah. Um, it's uh, easier to simply draw a six-spoke wheel than to describe it in, in words. Right, right. Um, and there has probably been one more um, illustration that has never been made in the page on the page of the Geertman, Geertmanna, the Geertman. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, the, uh, the copyist left some space free, which was never used. Ah. Uh, okay. So we, we don't know what sort of uh, illustration they will have been. The first mm -hmm. five lines or four lines, they usually always, he, he always started on the first line. Yeah, yeah. And here he left it free, he left it open. This is about the geared men. So there's no ah. clue of what the illustration may have been. Uh huh. But in his original, there will have been a, uh, some sort of uh, graphic that he uh, intended to uh, copy later. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. And then it just so somehow maybe it. Uh, he forgot about it, or he uh, didn't forgot about it, or maybe it was pasted on a different piece of paper on top of it, or something there. Possible, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Uh, um, so, so what we know about the Yule so far through our through our little conversation here is that it uh, uh, it has six spokes. <laughs> it's celebrated every year, and through um, through the observations of uh, the Venerable Bede in uh, in what's now England, um, we know that this was celebrated uh, in December. Um, he 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 says. Um, uh, they began the year on uh, the 25th of December when we celebrate the birth of the Lord. That very night, which we hold sacred, they used to call they used to call by the heathen word Motranecht, that is Mother's Night. Yeah. Um, interestingly, though, so the, the we talked about this uh, uh, off the air about you know why it's the 25th and not the 21st or the 22nd when the when the solstice actually happens. Um, I, I think um, there, there's there's several reasons uh, why that why that might be. Uh, the, the the one that I always explain to myself is that the the solstice happens on the 21st or the 22nd, so it's the night tonight. It's tonight, so it's between the 21st and the 22nd. Um, but since the day doesn't start uh, at night in 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 the ancient world, it starts at daybreak. Uh, mm -hmm. You could still say that it's the 21st, um, and, and then three days later uh, uh, is uh, when the when the sun starts to move back upwards on the horizon. So that uh, so the, on the 25th would be the first day that you can actually have a there's a measurable increase in the length of day. Yeah. Um, so that's the birth of the light uh, symbolically. Right. So that might have been like the first day of the year at some point in our ancient history. Yeah. Um, but then there's other um, uh, uh, explanations. Uh, I, I, t I showed you that uh, Tolkien had also, you know, he he studied uh, the the uh, Old Norse and, and and history and all kinds of stuff to come up with his writings and um, and 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 saw his writings not so much as fantasy but as a possible history of of the European people. And he came up with his own calendar system. And um, uh, according to his calendar system, the last day of the year is the first day of Yule. Uh, happens this year on the 20th of, De so yesterday of December. And then the first day of Yule, uh, the first day of the year would be the second day of Yule. And, um, and it happens on the 21st, so the actual equinox, uh, 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 solstice. So today, according to Tolkien's, uh, um, the, the Shire Reckoning, as it's called, uh, today, the 21st of December 2023, is the first day of the new year. 
which the question arises to me, what year is it? So if yeah. it's 2023, according to Kerstin Reckoning, yeah. right? uh, the, the Christian uh, way of reckoning it, um, and uh, we talked about uh, uh, what year it might be if we, uh, if we started measuring time from the downfall of Atlant. 2007 was 4,200. So now we are 16 years later. So 4217, is that? 16, so four, uh, 4 to 16, it would be now. Okay. The 4217th 4, year, so to speak. So that's that's kind of a neat uh, uh, way of looking at it too. I mean, if you're trying to really piece together where where we are on the timeline, uh, uh, it's it's a good. D does that factor in um, the ideas that you know that have been put forth by people like Fomenko that uh, there there may be uh, several centuries that were that were just tacked on to time, or that's a very compli a, complicated discussion. Um, yeah. Personally, I think that Hiddes' uh, comparison was incorrect. Mm -hmm. uh, when um, Lico wrote uh, the year 803 um, in Kersten begrip, yeah. it may have been a counting system that existed uh, after the um, year of uh, Krisen, as another mm -hmm. um, Jesus. Not yeah. Jesus of Nazareth, but uh, Jesus would have been another name of Buddha or Krisen or Fo. And if that would actually have been the beginning of the the, the Kersten begrip counting, then uh, instead uh, of yeah, so you say you said in, in, instead of uh, uh, Jesus Christ, yeah, uh, uh, it's it's the Jesus Krisen character that uh, came four hundred years before. Christ, uh, 600 right? years 600 okay um yeah that that makes a lot of sense because they do say that they that the that the Machiaren used uh, Krisen to to um yeah control people and get them yeah. under there but that is very uh, very complex uh, story we, we may uh, dedicate a whole uh, chat about that question yeah Absolutely, we're not going to get behind it tonight. But that my the, the point I'm making is that it's it, you know there's so much uncertainty about timing, even yeah. the day of the Yule celebration, how long it is. You know, yeah. there's this idea of the 12 days of Christmas, but that seems to have been instated by the Catholic Church at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but while we're talking about the Freya's conception of time, there are a few references to time <clears throat> with uh, with the with the Yule. Yep. Uh, for example, the idea that a law becomes or that a rule becomes a law if uh, if the if the Yule has rotated or, or, or revolved for 100 years. Uh, uh, so it says all rules that endure for, for one eu, yeah. that is 100 years, with the bearer and his wheel, which is the yule, may on the advice of the mother and by common consent be written on the walls of the birch. Once they have been written upon the walls, they are eova laws, and it is our duty to honor them. So uh, that's that's a reference to um, to the uh, using the Yule to count time. Huh? Yeah. And uh, uh, then an another thing that I that I ran across when uh, when I was reading f by the Venerable Bede uh, and about the Mother's Nacht, uh, uh, it's uh, from a different source. It says he wrote that the Angles began their year from the eighth day before January uh, before December twenty fifth. So if you count back eight days before December twenty fifth. Um, and uh, there is a law in Section 3B that says all the market receipts must be annually divided into 100 parts three days before the Yule Day. Mm -hmm. So if we take Tolkien's uh, uh, um, understanding of when the Yule Day occurs, which is on the 2021st, um, and we subtract three, we end up with eight days before December 25th, just like Bede um, uh, explains it here. And I, I thought that that was a, a very interesting corroboration of something that comes up in the Uralinda with real 
<laughs> you know, historic historicity. Yeah, and then and then the 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 last thing that I think is important to to mention when you're talking about the Yule is that, um, you know, what is the what is the point of the Yule celebration? Uh, you know, is it is it just a um, as as some historians would have us believe a kind of an orgiastic festival to um, to celebrate the 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 solstice and the turning of the year. Uh, but uh, thanks to the Uralinda, we have uh, the understanding that uh, the Yule, the wheel, um, is the primary symbol of Vralda. Uh, the fact that they say that uh, the children of, of the Freya and her two sisters were all born on the... Oh yeah, so it's after the 12th Yule feast, yeah. And every Yuletide, twins. So mm. all the children of the three mothers were all born in the Yule tide. That's kind of interesting, and it would mean that they would have been conceived in the beginning of spring. Oh yeah, well that makes sense too, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so interesting. Maybe Yule might have been a time when 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 uh, childbearing happened. I guess mm -hmm. uh, you were less busy during the Yule time, right? Uh, uh, you actually had time to stay home and have kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's an is interesting aspect that I wouldn't have thought of. So I'll read a um, uh, one line from section 13e, the primal teachings, number yeah. one. Uh, it says, with the circling of the Yule, all creation alters and changes, but only God is unchanging. Since Vralda is God, he cannot change. And since he endures, only he is being and everything else seeming. That that goes together with the, the the line that we read at the beginning. It just sums up what they believe about time. That that only we're subject to time, uh, and that it's a that it's a seeming something that grows out of the life of Ralda, the creator. And uh, we celebrate the Yule every year, not just because the solstice has come. And not just because we got the letters, that's an interesting part of it that has, has seems to have lived uh, for, for these four and a half thousand years, um, uh, but that there's a spiritual aspect to it. And it's the remembering that uh, God, Vralda, God meaning good in Freyas, is unchanging. And uh, for me, that's what uh, that's what makes this celebration so important. I uh, uh, we get together, we, we're with family, and we uh, we uh, ex take a few moments to to reflect on the unchanging nature of uh, our Creator. Yes, and that without uh, you, there would be no time. Yeah. And we wouldn't exist at all, right? No. There would be no movement. There would be no nothing. Yeah. Um, so as hard as life can be, <laughs> you know, in these three days, you know, I, 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 the, the church celebrates those three days from the twenty first to the twenty fifth. I kind of, for me, that's that would that's what end up being my Yule celebration, and um, uh, everybody has their own kind of. Uh, take on it the, the the Wiccans have their own take on it everybody has their own thing um, the, the, but uh, for me those three days are just three days that I can I can stay home be with my family and uh, be thankful for uh, everything that I've been given yeah beautiful a few little things I would like to add because the word you um, yeah I think it's also the basis for uh, the verbs, uh, the Dutch verb Julen or Jodelen. Yeah. In English, you also say Jodel, eh? uh -huh. uh, which is making sound. Um, and there are two fragments or three fragments about this verb with uh, different declensions. Altomet Twilden and Julden, ja, to same up a heim. And that folk, that folk, because to Julande and to Spotande. Mm -hmm. And Arek came wieder out to Jugande and to Julande. That's quite interesting. And you mentioned the word jolly, even. Yeah. It has a connotation with Christmas, right? Jolly, uh, jolly Yule, I introduced, I use myself. 
Uh, Instead of Merry Christmas, it's yeah, Jolly Yule. Jolly Yule. Uh, <laughs> in in oh, Dutch, we say uh, Jolig, which is also uh -huh. like cheerful. Yeah. And I think, uh, and in Freya's, it would have been Jolik or Julik. Mm -hmm. But it's not yeah. used in the. And then uh, there's the name Yolanda. Yolanda, this is the present oh. past part participle. Oh, wow. Yolanda. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when you go to. Um, Websites that explain names, they mm -hmm. most of the times they don't have a clue. Right. And it's the same with this name. Oh, this is in Dutch. Uh, perhaps English has the same. Yolanta uh, is a Czech, Lithuanian, Polish and Slovak form of the Greek name Yolanta. It's derived from Greek words Jole, Violet and Antos, flower. Well, the Dutch page says it's not not certain at all. The ontstaan van de naam is the um, origin of the name is not clear. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people with who had this name also in the distant past. But it would make sense if the name just means making cheerful sounds. <laughs> yeah, cheerful child kind of. Yeah. yeah, that's very interesting. Like it's it, it's so strange how if you just pronounce something a little bit differently, you you, you say Yolanda, right? But if if we if you changed it, if you read it in a Freya, if you saw that in a Freya's text, you would say Yolanda. Yeah, y Yolanda. Uh, yeah. And one detail, perhaps to add, I'll, I'll also mix in this this um, music. Uh, but there's, there's a part of the video saved from the flood about uh, the Yule feast, about this fragment that we um, discussed in the beginning. Okay. With some notes from Ottoma, who also um, compared it to the Christmas and the St. Nicholas um, celebrations. Good. Well, um, you know, we uh, this hasn't been a linear discussion, but the, the topic there's not much source, even in the Uralinda, about uh, the the Yol or the Yule, as we call it. It's uh, quite a mysterious topic, even though it's it's uh, uh, central not only to people who are interested in Uralinda, but it's central to Western civilization. Christmas time and the Yule tide uh, are the highlight of the year for most people, I would say. And yet we don't know very much about it. Yeah, I think that the conclusion that the uh, name, the word Yule, is connected to both the concept of a wheel of time and of a celebration is most significant from Uralinda. Mm -hmm. Because in uh, regular etymology, they sometimes suspect uh, a connection, but they never, they're never certain. Right. And it does make sense that uh, the wheel of time starting uh, or an ending in the um, uh, mid-December mm -hmm. was also celebrated then. Yeah. So, so um, uh, we, we, we did our best to get behind <laughs> why we celebrate it. And uh, I wish you a um, jolly Yule and a conventional Happy New Year as well. <laughs> And hopefully we'll get a chance to uh, talk more and uh, bring in more people uh, into the discussion in the coming year. Yes, same to you, Bruce. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.